Previously on the Ron Van Dam Show. You have bombarded my mind with useless, petty crap. We can talk later. Perhaps in the kitchen while we're eating a sandwich. <sighs> what the hell? And now, today's episode. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. Hey, what's up? <laughs> well, hey, what's up? That's better, said it better. Welcome to the program, it is the Ron Van Dam Show, guess which one I am. No... No, not him. Oh, never mind. So what's going on? You talk for a while. I'll just shut up and listen to you for a change. Nothing to say? Can't do a half an hour show yourself? Well, (laughs) it's too bad. All right, that's enough. That'll be enough of that. Welcome to the program. I am Ron Van Dam. Yes, I am. Stop, stop arguing with me. My God, give it up. I know who I am. It's on my birth certificate. My mother named me. My father was somewhere in town. I don't know where. I think he was sitting in another room in the hospital. Yeah, when I was born back in 1627 during the age of the Druids, uh, the uh, the father sat in in a waiting room down the hall from uh, from the birthing room where my mother was. I don't know if she was giving birth to me or uh, I don't know what she was doing, uh, reading a magazine, and uh, there I came, and thus, and thusly, I was thrusted out <laughs> with the greatest, the greatest of pain. I'm not sure if my mother, uh, I never asked, you don't talk about this stuff with your mother, not back when I was born. You don't do that. No, no. You don't, you don't. Mom, uh, was, was I a cesarean or, or was I natural? Well, you weren't a cesarean because we didn't come from Sicily. So uh, naturally you were born. Okay, you don't understand what it is. Did they open you up? Oh, did they open me up, Ron? Oh, boy, did they open me up. <laughs> did they op- Your head opened me up is what happened there. Yeah, it? It's hard to ma- I'm six foot three. It's hard to imagine that I, uh, oh, I wasn't that big then. Oh, okay, that explains that. Boy, did I grow. Whoa, whoa. Anyway, uh, my father was down the hall uh, with other fathers waiting in the room. And uh, they weren't uh, they weren't that involved. I mean, uh, when I when I had the kids uh, through my vagina, um, uh, everybody was around me. Uh, I think an entire busload of people were there. There were nurses and doctors and street vendors. Because after you give birth, there's there's nothing more than you know you want a street vendor you want a street vendor? you want a, you want a good street vendor by the way uh, i don't eat hot dogs at all the only time i'll eat a hot dog is from a street vendor and you're probably saying ron that's disgusting you know what street vendors do with hot dogs Ooh, they shove them in all different kinds of places and then they put them on a bun Ooh, you don't want that yeah i do somehow eating a hot dog outside from a vendor or at a ballpark, not that I go to a ballpark, my God, what a boring thing that is, but that's, I'll go to a, a ballpark just to have a hot dog because that's, I, I, I've ne- I don't think I've ever eaten a hot dog inside. <sighs> I've never done that. I'll have to try it. Whew. God, can I waste time or what? Welcome to the program. <laughs> I haven't even started the show. The hell am I talking about? The hell are you listening to? I have a very interesting show for you today. I have a topic that is going to blow your pants right off of your groin. And, oh, God, what's wrong with me? And then we have a great guest coming up a little bit later in the program as well. So this is a package deal here. I mean, (laughs) 
This is going to be great. Before we start the show, oh, Ron, what was all that crap you've been talking about? I thought the show started. No, that was just a lead-in. That's a lead-in to the show. Before we do that, you have to understand the rules and regulations of this program as laid out by the FCC. Here are the rules. Ron Van Dam is an experienced talk show host. That's right. Do not attempt to try this at home. Don't. Some listeners may experience nausea or vomiting while listening to this show. You all will. Please consult with your doctor or psychologist before listening to this program. Telemedicine. The Ron Van Dam Show is not intended for listeners who have had a history of high blood pressure no. or acid reflux. None. Women who are pregnant should stay at least 20 feet away from the radio speaker at least. and should avoid listening to the show for more than two hours at any one time. Mm -hmm. The Ron Van Dam t-shirts should never be worn in conjunction with the Ron Van Dam pants God, no. unless it is after Memorial Day or before Labor Day. But even then, but even then no. please refrain from loud conversation as this may be disruptive to others nearby who are trying to listen to this program. That's right. Your enjoyment of the program may vary. Yeah. It may vary greatly. Really. Please enjoy the show. Thank you. I'm sorry I was talking through that. I can't seem to shut up today. It's a quality that I seek in others, and yet I can't do it myself. So <laughs> I'm not a big talker. I'm really not. People used to invite me to parties because they thought I would be the life of the party, and they realized, no, this is more like a funeral. Get Ron out of the building. Yeah, I'm not a big talker because I can't do small talk. I don't even know what it is. Is that like having conversations with midgets? I don't even know what small talk is. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I'm uncomfortable with it. I mean, I can only nod and smile so much before I explode. Here's what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, all of a sudden, in the news, the government is talking about flying saucers. What? Are you serious, Ron? I thought that was just like a, a joke of, of people lived in trailer parks. No, apparently not. Flying saucers uh, actually are serious stuff. I know. I don't get it either. But apparently, it's, uh, it's true. If you look up at the sky, eventually, someday, you could see a flying saucer or even two. In my curiosity... I started looking into the history of the flying saucers and the UFO phenomenon. How long has this been going on? How long has this been going on? <gasps> That's a song that I just sung. Is that Marvin Gaye? I don't know. I have no idea. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I wondered like, how far back do these UFO sightings go and, and how real are they? Well, they go back to, to really, like, Jesus apparently uh, saw a lot of them. But see, in, that, in those days, human beings were just so freaking stupid because they didn't have science back then. There were no telescopes or astronomers or scientific studies. I mean, people are walking around with test tubes, but they didn't know what was in it. They were doing experiments, but they didn't know why. So uh, I wondered, so they saw things in the, so in the sky, streaking across the sky, and they thought, oh, my, my God, it's, it's, it's alien beings. No, it's a meteorite. It's, it's, it's stuff falling from the sky. You know, it's like space rocks, you know, burning up in the atmosphere. We all know that. We know the pattern of that. It, they streak across the sky. And, but in those days, human beings didn't know that stuff. They were just stupid. They were still trying to figure out how to lace up their shoes. They, they had no concept of anything. But at what point did we actually start seeing these flying saucers? And, and, I, and I came up with uh, through a history search. I had to go down to the library. I had to put pants on and everything. I had to put pants on. And go to the library, and, and I had to be quiet. Shh, 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 shh. Stop breathing so loud. And I went to some microfiche. I don't know. I don't know either. And I came up with this. Uh, back in 1947, most of you weren't born yet. Some of you were. 
but not a lot of you. Millennials just come along for the ride. I know you have no idea what I'm talking about. Back in 1947, there was a guy named Kenneth Arnold, and he lived in Washington. And apparently, um, he saw over uh, Mount Rainier a flying saucer. He saw a UFO in the sky, and he reported it to the police and to the government and was quoted in the newspaper. It was, it was a big news item. He was interviewed by all these newspapers. And uh, here, this is, this is an interesting story. It's, actually, it's a fact, by the way. This is a fact. Yeah. This is, your, this is your fact of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, please prepare yourselves. It is that time again for Ron's fact of the day. That introduction cost me like $2,000. Anyway, uh, so, <laughs> so anyway, so, uh, yeah, so he's interviewed by a newspaper, and the newspaper puts out the headline, Flying Saucer, uh, uh, seen flying over Mount Rainier from, from another uh, galaxy or whatever. And uh, so I did some research because that was the first sighting of a quote-unquote flying saucer. That's what they called UFOs in those days. They called them flying saucers. So I looked this up, and I found that uh, this guy, Kenneth Arnold, in 1947, he never said he saw a flying saucer. He said he saw something in the sky, and it was skipping through the sky as if you took a saucer and skipped it across water on a pond. That's what it, that was the trajectory. That's how that, this thing moved, like if you threw a saucer onto water and it skipped on the water. That was his explanation. He didn't see a saucer-shaped thing in the sky. He was referring to how it flew, like, uh, like if you threw a saucer. So, um, that, but, but, that, but it stuck. It stuck. But it was an error in, in the newspaper and, and in, in, in what this guy Kenneth Arnold said. All of a sudden, within like minutes, people started looking to the sky and saw these flying saucers, these saucer-shaped objects flying in the sky. But that's not what the guy said. He didn't see a saucer in the sky. That just shows you how society is so messed up. They started seeing things based on what they heard in an article, but it wasn't what they were seeing. And thus the flying saucers. Well, the movie industry picked up on this immediately. And they started making movies with flying saucers, these alien spaceships that were shaped like saucers. And there were some, it was the destruction of the planet, flying saucers taking over New York City and, and Los Angeles, and they're shooting death rays down at the people, and the people are going, whoa, look at the flying saucer. Um, um, yeah, never happened, man. People started videotaping these things. It was, it was all from an error in the paper, nomenclature-wise. However... However, about a week ago, last Sunday, 60 Minutes, which is a very prolific news show, uh, did a whole segment on these uh, UFOs, unidentified flying objects. And apparently the government has been researching this for quite some time, but stopped a while ago, and now it's picking up again. We actually, in our budget, and it has been like this for decades and decades and decades, our budget actually includes investigations of these unidentified flying objects that people are seeing. Apparently, the amount of these unidentified flying objects, or UFOs, has increased dramatically over the years. So on 60 Minutes, they started uh, interviewing actual pilots and uh, military pilots and they said, and this is what, what, got, what got me, man. This is, this is why I'm talking about it. They said that, uh, ooh, we see these unidentified flying objects every day. And Bill Whitaker, who was the reporter, uh, said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on now. Hold up, hold up. You see flying saucers, unidentified flying objects 
every day. Yeah, we all do who are up there in the skies. We see them things we don't we, that make no sense they they fly in ways that man can't can't has not created aircraft that can do that oh there was even uh, one official uh government official who said we don't want to really talk about this too much because it would cause panic and we don't need panic right now you thought there was no toilet paper on the shelves when the pandemic started what if you start spreading this news that there's things in the sky we we don't know what they are and they show up every day. Um, we have no idea what they are. <laughs> With all our scientific abilities, they're, they're not images. They're, they're not reflections. They show up on radar. They are there. And we don't know where they've come from. And we don't think it's from any technology anybody has. Because they do stuff we can't do. They just they, they, they speed off and disappear like in front of our eyes and and, and, and they're off the radar. It's it's like it's like, well, okay, you're gonna make a lot of people shit their pants right now. There's an explanation for everything we all thought, or is there? So that's that's the deal. Uh uh, they want to reopen. It used to be called Project Blue Book, where they would uh, keep this information pretty much from the public. There's Area 51, where they believe that uh, way back in those days, in the 1940s and such, that uh, uh, an alien craft actually did crash uh, there in the in the desert, and they uh, the Ariz- the greater Arizona area, and they actually um, found a dead alien or tried to bring it back to life or what. I, I, it's like, whoa, that sounds like a hoax. I, yeah, now I'm not sure. And some people are saying, well, you know, if there is life somewhere else, what the hell are they doing here? I mean, if they're looking for intelligent life, the word intelligent kind of kills the whole idea of the visit. There's no intelligence on this planet. Let's face it. I mean, we like to think we're intelligent. Compared, if, if, if there's another being, another civilization that can easily visit our planet anytime it wants, it, there, there's, it has nothing to do with intelligent life. They're a little more intelligent than we are. <laughs> or or uh, have some countries developed uh, these flying objects uh, in secret and are actually uh, using them as, as spy vehicles. Well, I don't think so about that either because now we have satellites that can see you see your belly button from space, which is one thing I don't want to see. <laughs> yeah, the story is from space. The satellites, they can actually see your license plate on your car. That's why I'm getting bills in the mail for these tolls when I'm on the highway. I don't know. I don't understand it. Anyway, uh, we're starting to get into the conversation uh, on this planet of are there alien ships that are here constantly? Then we get into the conversation, well, maybe they are always here, but we don't see in that dimension. We only see in a certain number of dimensions. There are things that are around all the time, but we can't see them or experience them because they're in another dimension. They coexist with us. Okay, now you're freaking me out, and now you're making my brain explode. So another mystery uh, is before us, and that's the story. That's your that's your fact of the day. I hope you found it interesting. I did. Okay, uh, my guest is going to join us momentarily, at which time we will uh, obviously learn something that we didn't know before, which is... Uh, Kind of difficult to believe, but yet, we'll be right back after this. Gentlemen, have you ever been in the mood for a nice knish, or maybe bagel in the schmear, but you're also in the mood for some exotic dancing? You can't find those in the same place. Until now. I'm Moishi Kaufman, inviting you to come visit us at Moishi's Knish and Strippers, the area's first genuine kosher deli and titty bar. Come in and rock out with your locks out and check out our dances. These girls are so nice, you'll plots. And they're all certified kosher. 
Maybe not the kind of girl you bring home to mother, but once you see Delia fold a dollar bill without using her hands, you won't care what mom thinks. Look, Bobby, you're in a strip club. That alone is enough to kill her, so live a little. Every Thursday, don't miss our buns and brisket buffet from noon to six. Moishi's condition strippers is closed on the Sabbath. Hey, we might be a little unorthodox, but we're not heathens. Stephen Riken joins us now. He's got a new book, Oh My God, How to Grill Vegetables. Thanks for being uh, here. Uh, it's a it's a nice looking book. Well, thank you, Ron. Yeah, not so bad there. I guess we're getting into grilling season, is what I understand here. And uh, sure, I can I can grill a, a fillet of chicken or a steak or a hamburger. Got to tell you, uh, uh, Stephen, uh, I'm not too up on grilling vegetables. I love them, but I don't think I really know how to do that. Well, you know, uh, it's uh, I, I'm I'm not surprised, and let me try and uh, let me try and invite you because the vegetable kingdom is incredibly varied. Uh, those from asparagus to zucchini, yeah, uh, and one size does not fit all when growing vegetables. Uh, each vegetable requires uh, its own unique cooking method. So, yeah. with your high moisture content vegetables like uh, zucchini. Uh, like asparagus, mm-hmm. uh, you want to work over, you want to do direct grilling. It means working directly over a hot fire. Yeah. On the other hand, when you're grilling a firmer, denser, uh, larger vegetable, like uh, let's say a potato or acorn squash, mm-hmm. you want to use indirect grilling. That is, oh. cooking the, the uh, vegetable next to, not directly over the fire, with the grill lid closed. Sort of turns your grill into an outdoor oven, but the beauty is you can place wood chunks or chips on the uh, fire. Okay generate wood smoke, which always makes uh, grilled food taste yeah. better. You know, on TV and in pictures, I see shish kebab. When I think of uh, grilled vegetables, mm-hmm. uh, I think of shish kebab, but I see them on a skewer, all married together, all different kinds of vegetables. They all look perfect. And I've tried to do that before. They do cook at a different rate. They don't look necessarily yeah, perfect. Right. So what is the secret to that? Are those rearranged for pictures? Well, the secret to that, they very well may be re- <laughs> rearranged the pitch, but uh, the secret to grilling vegetables in that, con- uh, making vegetable kebabs, yeah. is to choose vegetables that all cook at the same rate. Ah. Uh, so, exam- for example, I have a gr- an Indian grilled cheese kebab that features bell peppers, tomatoes, and onions, and slices of uh, grilling cheese called Ooh. paneer, Ooh. like halloumi, you know, the cheeses you can grill without them uh, melting all over the place. Really? And they're cut to the same size. That's really important that they, they uh, grill the same size. Uh-huh. And then the onions and the bell peppers, you know, they grill sort of at a similar rate. Uh-huh. Or another kebab that's really cool in the book is a, uh, it's a grilled, um, a, a grilled uh, Brussels sprout kebab. Oh. And in between the Brussels sprouts, you cut the Brussels sprouts in half so they uh, cook more quickly. Uh, you place, place slices of bacon mm-hmm. because... In uh, this book, it's vegetable forward and uh, mostly uh, vegetarian, but I do have a number of recipes that sure. involve bacon and ham. Yeah. Uh, you know, my philosophy is uh, if a uh, little meat will make a vegetable taste better, then heck yeah, a little meat there will be. Interesting. Will, 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 the, will the bacon, for example, if you go that route, will that help uh, uh, grease and moisturize the vegetables? Does that help in any sense? We- Oh, yeah, it absolutely does, because remember um, the difference between grilling meat and grilling vegetable. All meat has some degree of fat uh, in them. Uh, In steaks, we call it marbling, right? right? And that helps keep the meat moist during grilling. Vegetables do not have fat, so Mm -hmm. you need to add fat in some way. Uh, You can add it either by uh, marinating the vegetable in olive oil, for example, or you Mm -hmm. can add it by basting a vegetable with melted butter, or you can add it by wrapping a vegetable in bacon or placing little bacon pieces between vegetables on mm-hmm. a kebab. Interesting. Um, the, the definition of, I, I get what grilling is, but I don't know. Sometimes I, I like the little the little black grill marks, but I don't know if I'm going too yeah, far with that. Me too. Am I just making, am I just producing carbon here? I mean, what, what's what's going on with the, with the grill marks and, and the, 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 that char kind of thing? 
Well, you know, I always say there's a difference between grilling and burning. And grilling uh, is sort of dark brown and delicious, and burning is jet black. And okay. A little less delicious. Okay. So that's, that's sort of what you look for. But let's say you're a hopeless clutch at the grill. I even have, <laughs> uh, I even have an answer for you because there's a technique called cave manning where you would lay a vegetable directly on the, uh, the embers of a charcoal yes. uh, grill. Ooh. And that is really great for cooking bell peppers, for cooking eggplant, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. whole onions. You actually want to burn the exterior because that creates a smoke flavor uh, I see. Uh, in the sweet flesh in the center. I see. Okay. What about covering when you are doing the vegetables? A lot of people just have hibachi. Some have the, the, uh, the barbecues with the hood on it. Um, which, which is better is, is one better than the other? Does it matter? Uh, one is not better than the other. They're just different. Each Uh is, uh, associated with a different kind of vegetable. Uh, with your open grill, like your hibachi, you want to grill small vegetables, asparagus, uh, okra, uh, green beans, onion, sliced onion, sliced, uh, sliced eggplant, uh, Mm -hmm. cherry tomatoes, things that benefit from direct grilling. But if you're grilling a larger, firmer, uh, harder vegetable, like let's say an acorn squash or a potato, you want, definitely want to cover the grill. Uh, you also want to set the grill up for indirect grilling. That is, the fires on the outside, the vegetable uh, in the center. Uh, you never want to cook a large vegetable directly over the fire. Or the outside will burn before the inside is ready, okay. uh, yeah, is, is cooked enough. Good. I want to talk about your book for a second. Uh I got to congratulate you because you could have called the book uh, Grillin' and Chillin' or some kind of cutesy name like that. I love the title, How to Grill Vegetables. Thank you. To the point, there it is. I mean, it's like, well, thank you for being, for a change for a book being upfront about what it is. Uh, I, I, I respect well, that. Well, I'll, t- I'll tell you a funny little, tell you a funny little behind the scenes story on that. Sure. So. <laughs> Uh, this book is called How to Grill Vegetables, the New Bible for Barbecuing Vegetables uh-huh. Over Live Fire. Right. Okay, so my first barbecue book was a book called The Barbecue Bible. Yep. So that's sort of a little that nod works. to that title. That works. In this, in mm. this. And then my best-selling book to date is mm. a book called How to Grill. That's uh, almost uh, up to about 2 million copies. Yes. And so How to Grill Vegetables is a little play on that. So. What the publisher wanted to do was just do a little play on some of my existing books. But, uh, you know, I wish your listeners could see the cover. And if they buy the book, they can. Yes. So it's a beautiful That's charred it. pepper, uh, charred lettuce. That's what it does. Cherry tomatoes, That's carrots. It. Yeah. These, and these are all vegetables yeah. that are great on the grill. Yeah. Can I tell you, I actually ate half of the cover before I realized you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> 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 it looked pretty appetizing, I'll tell you. It actually Thank did. Uh, when Thank I you. got my copy, I, I actually, the next day, I actually grilled vegetables. So you're very effective, <laughs> I must say. Good, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad. It's, it's absolutely true. All right, how do people follow uh, you, Stephen? So my website is barbecuebible.com, and that's B A R B E C U E B I B L E dot com, uh-huh. spelled out. And when you're on my site, be sure to sign up for my Up and Smoke newsletter. Uh, that's a free weekly newsletter, and it gives you, you know, tips, recipes, yeah. uh, the latest Stephen Reichland thoughts, uh, okay. my event schedule, restaurants I like. It's a really valuable uh, reference that costs absolutely nothing. Perfect. Well, uh, by time, I am restricted, so I must say goodbye. At the same time, I could talk to you if, forever. Thanks for talking to me, and I appreciate well, it. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Well, that'll do it for me today. I'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new show. I said those words very slowly for no reason whatsoever. Make it a great day. You have the ability to make things. You know, a lot of crap happens. A lot of things happen, and they can affect you in a negative way. Or you can slough them off and say, look, who cares anymore? And just go on your merry way and be a lot happier. Yeah, I wish I had that talent where I could just slough things off like, ugh, I don't care. You know, but eh, it's not that easy to do. 
That's why a lot of people are in therapy. There's like too much stuff going on. I've started to watch the news again because uh, Trump was kicked out of office uh, by vote. Of course, uh, there's a good percentage of this country that believes that the election was uh, was fixed and uh, it was a fraud and all that stuff. They don't believe that Biden is really the president and it's just uh these are some republicans uh, it's just uh i don't know some sometimes you know i <laughs> i thought with trump i was i was i was in a nightmare you know and i, and I woke up from a nightmare i don't think it's over yet i i think i'm still in it anyway have yourselves at well ron seriously you're going to end the show and then just leave us with that yeah i am like do you deal with it now, things are looking up. Things are looking up, ladies and gentlemen. There's a reason to put a smile on your face. Keep it there. Make it happen, is my point. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I wish you peace. Peace.